Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to complete the question here based on the topic of perspective projection. Uh, this itself comes from the 2013 uh, Leaving Cert DCG paper, higher level, and it is question B3 on that paper. And as I said, it's on the topic of perspective. So it says here uh, in B3, the Egyptian, uh, the Egyptian pyramids shown in the 3D graphic below are considered to be architectural masterpieces. They are square based and were built with precision in terms of alignment, geometrical shape and proportion. Figure B3 shows, uh, sorry, shows the plan and elevation of a square based pyramid with an intersecting triangular entrance. So you can see here we've got an elevation view here sitting on the XY line and we've got the plan view down here and that's in figure B3. The scale is 1 is to 1000. Now, question is part A. Draw the given plan and elevation and construct a perspective drawing of the structure given the following. The spectator point is 8 meters from corner A. There's corner A. The picture plane is touching corner A. And the horizon line is five meters above the ground line. And then it says, note, use an auxiliary vanishing point to locate the sloping edges of the entrance. So you can see they kind of have an entrance uh, structure here, and that's kind of the view of it in the plan. And what we have to do is we have to draw the given plan and elevation. Now, usually in these perspective questions, they'll often tell us, just draw the plan, and then we'll work it out. But they've asked us for the elevation here, so we will put it in. We have to reproduce this guy here. Now, on my sheet, I have this set up in a portrait format because they've asked me for the elevation. I think based on the size when I'm doing the elevation here, the plan here, uh, the perspective is going to go way down. So I don't think a landscape would be appropriate here. But just going to apply some dimensions here now. So our scale here is 1 is to 100. What that means is if I break this down, let's say if we just work off the height here of 8 meters, okay, what does that equate to in millimeters? That would be 8,000 millimeters. So I do 800. Zero, zero. Okay, and if I apply that into the scale, and I divide that by 100, well, if I get off, get rid of the zeros, that's 80 over 1, therefore the height of that is 80. Okay, now if we apply that to the rest of these, well, it's quite easy to work it out. 8 meters, once again, will be 80. 1 meter will be 10. 2 meters will be 20. 4 meters will be 40. And 2 meters will be 20. Okay, so there we go. We're going to draw the elevation and the plan view. And you can see there's an inclination here of 40 degrees as well for the opening entrance. So I'm going to start it up on the left-hand side because my, um, just to show you here, point A there. You can see point A is going at an angle of 60 degrees. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to start maybe my like XY line over here. Okay, there's the elevation and the plan view. I'm going to do it roughly down here. Okay, so my set square there. Start with a horizontal line for the plan. That line is going to be 80 millimeters in length. So we'll pick a start point. And I'm going to measure 80 millimeters to the right. There's the 80. And it's a square base pyramid. So obviously it only goes down 80 as well. So a line down, a line down. Because it's a pyramid, if I actually connect the diagonals there, it's probably the easiest way rather than measuring. If we just connect the diagonal. That will give me one diagonal, then I can do my line across, and technically the other diagonal, if I have it done accurately, and I have, it should be like that. Okay, so there is my pyramid, sorry, in the base. Uh, it comes out one centimeter, 10 millimeters, so if I measure out one, and along there then, I'm going to measure distances of two and four, two centimeters, so 20 millimeters, so from here. 20 plus the 40 is the 60. And I'll mark the middle as well. And that should be directly in line with that. Yep, it is. Happy with that. There we go. I'm going to bring these in. I'm going to bring these in. Okay. So there we have it. And uh, we're going to get to kind of the apex point um, later on. Because I don't know exactly where that point is. So just while I have it now, I'm going to go over this in my marker. I just think it stands out a little bit clearer on the screen there. I'm going to there. To there. I'm going to heavy in all my horizontal lines in one go. Now I get my vertical. And my vertical. Now these are the Sloping lines of the pyramid. We're going at 45 degrees. And once again, I actually just forgot these vertical ones here. 
I put in this one. I don't know how far it's just going just yet. Let's figure that out in a minute. Okay, so there we have it. That is as much of the plan view that I can draw at this moment in time. I'm just going to heavy in my XY line. Okay, now I want to draw in the elevation. So to draw the elevation, I'm going to project this guy up. This guy. I'm also going to project up the apex. That has a height of 80 millimeters, so mark it from 8 up as far as 16. That's the apex. There to there. Bring this one up. And this one. Okay, so there we have it. I'm going to draw this in before I draw in the entrance at the front. Okay. Right, that's what our pyramid looks like in the elevation. And now what I have to do is use my protractor from this point right here, that point right there, I'm going to measure 40 degrees. So I'm using my T square. From there, measure 40 degrees this way. I'm on the money there now. And what's helpful here is once I've drawn that, technically, this point right here should connect down, and that'll actually be going to 40 degrees as well. Okay, so now I can heavy in that. So there is our elevation view fully completed. Now, what we can use from the elevation is to determine how uh, far this point goes in, okay? Now that was probably why they asked us to draw the elevation here because we have to determine how far this goes in. They didn't give us the measurements. So what we can do is, if I bring the height of the elevation over here, and I drop it all the way over onto this kind of, I suppose, the sloping surface or the sloping line, of the object well can i find that in the plan view yes i can so where it hits that edge there i can drop it all the way down to my plan okay that will be where that edge is in the plan view and then obviously that will go across and there it is so it comes into here that's how far i have it okay so there's our plan view now completed okay and what's helpful for us as well is that actually does give us a height as well okay so there we have it. I'm going to label this point right here at the corner. It's corner A. So now what we have to do, if I just refer back to the drawing here, it says here the spectator point is 8 metres from corner A. So once again, 8 metres is 80 millimetres. The picture plane touches corner A and the horizon line is 5 metres above the ground line. That would be 50 millimetres. So 80 metres from, or sorry, 80 millimetres from corner A at an angle of 60 degrees. And then we're going to get the horizon line and the ground line. So, I'm going to pull my visualizer down now a little bit so you can see that fully on the screen. I'm going to get my 60 degree set square. I'm going to go at 60 degrees from corner A. On that line there, we're going to measure a distance of 80 millimeters to find our spectator. I want to be accurate now. So 80 millimeters is right there. So at that point right there, I'm going to call that S. Now, how do we get the picture plane? Normal process will apply here. So from the spectator, I'm going to go to the extreme left of the object. From the spectator, I'm going to go to the extreme right of the object in the plan view. And what that is creating now is what's called a cone of vision. Now, what are we going to do with that cone of vision? With the cone of vision, we're going to bisect it to get the middle of it, and that's going to give us what's called our line of sight. So if I bisect that angle created by the cone of vision. Cone of vision is created by looking to the furthest left and right of the object. And all I'm going to do now is with that line there, that line there is really important to me. Okay, on that line, I'm just going to write, i put it in this way, L-O-S. I often like to write it in. You don't have to. Sometimes I do it um, because that's going to be the line that everything is dictated about. Everything is going to project parallel to it and the picture plane will be perpendicular. So with my set squares, I'm now going to set up a perpendicular line to the line of sight. That's going to give me my picture plan going through corner A. So, perpendicular through corner A. Make sure I can go down far enough. 
that should be appropriate there. That there is going to be my PP, that is called pitch plane. Okay, so there we have it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up for our vanishing points. So to locate the vanishing points, what we're going to do is we're going to follow the faces, the direction of the faces. So in this case, the faces are running in a vertical and a horizontal direction. When I say the faces, I should say the lines. So I'm going to go horizontal to hit the picture blend and vertical. Okay, now these two points here are technically where the, the spectator's view or where I should say the spectator's vanishing point view line would be. So, at this point, what I often do now is I'm actually going to take off the sheet and I'm going to rotate the sheet so that the picture plane is actually going to be in line with the T-square. So, at this point, as I said, I'm going to whip off the masking tape. I just find this is a bit of a time saver because it's going to eliminate the process of um, using sliding set squares. Now, if you do have an adjustable set square, you can keep it. But even if I did have one, I still like to do it this way, regardless. So I'm going to rotate. It only takes a couple of seconds. I'm going to rotate the sheet so that the T-square is going to sit in line with the pitch plane. Just adjust it there accordingly. That looks... That looks okay to me. Now I'm going to get my masking tape and re-tape down my sheet. So get two bits taped down. That should be enough. It should be sufficient. There we go. Right. Use the last of the masking tape down here as well. Okay. So now that we've adjusted our sheet in line with the pitch plane, the next thing we have to do is to set up a ground line. So to set up a ground line. I'm just going to move the visualizer here slightly and bring it down so it's sitting above it. There we go. So you can see it there. I'm going to come back up here if I need the height because really we're using everything from the plan view. So I'm just adjusting my page there on the screen accordingly. Okay, now to set up a ground line, the ground line can go anywhere at all. I like to, if I can, depending on the sheet and how I'm set up, okay, I like to set up my ground line in such a way that the ground line is going to be below the spectator. So I'm going to set it up down about here. And the ground line will always be parallel with the horizon line. So there's the ground line. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up the horizon line, which was 50 millimeters above that. So just in that there again, apologies. So 50 millimeters, because they told us that in the information, I'm going to measure up 50 millimeters. And from there then, that's where my horizon line is going to be. And the horizon line is where you're actually going to have your vanishing points. So if you remember at the very start, or why a couple of minutes ago, we did these lines here to help us locate our vanishing points. Now we can find those by projecting those down onto the horizon line. And there we have it. Now the one on the left is going to be called BP1. And this one on the right, BP2. So I've located my vanishing points. Now at this stage in a DCG exam, okay, if you got this far in the question, you'd have a good a good chunk of the marks already got. Now what we have to do, if I just refer back to the question, okay, draw the given plan elevation and construct a perspective drawing. So that's what we have to do now. We have to get what does this object look like in regards to the perspective. Now, what's helpful about this one in the sense is, I'm just going to focus on the pyramid. I'm going to forget about the entrance for a minute. Now the pyramid is made up of five points, the four on the base and the one at the apex. Now what's helpful here straight away is one of the base points, point A, is touching the ground already, okay, or is touching the picture plane. So if I project that straight down, technically that will be point A down here on the ground. Okay, just move it there slightly so you can see it there. That is point A on the ground. Now A, let's say, runs back to this edge here, okay, how do I find it? Well, because it's running in that direction, it's going to go parallel with this line. I'm projecting it to BP2. Now, this one, this edge is running in this direction, so that's parallel with this one, so that's going to project to BP1. Now, how do I find exactly where those points end? So where they end is the spectator's view of them as they hit the picture plane. So this point here, the spectator sees this point all the way back here, but it's the spectator's view of it once it hits the picture plane. So as you bring it in, where it hits the pitch plane, that point there, I'm going to drop it down, and that will help locate it for me from my first perspective. Likewise with this one over here, that point hits the pitch plane right here, and there we go. Now, I've found two edges. Okay, I can heavy in completely this one. 
Now, the reason I'm not heavying in this one is because I know there's the entrance that has to go in front of it. So I'm not going to heavy in that just yet. But if I wanted to find all the base points, okay, from this point here, let's say that line that was running back there, once again, that is parallel with this line. So this point here would vanish to BP1. And this one here would go to BP2. And technically, it's like I found my four points. One, two, three, four. I've got my four base points. All I'm missing now is the apex. Now, to find that one there, we're actually going to have to use a height line. So, to use a height line, what I'm going to do is, parallel to any uh, vanishing line that I already have, I'm going to project down the apex, okay? So I could either go parallel to this one, okay, and project it down here until it hits uh, my picture plane, okay? Or I can go parallel to this one, which is for VP2, and project it down until here. And that's the one I'm actually going to use, because the line is running in that direction already, so it's just a case of extending it on. So by extending this line down, that is technically parallel. And it's like we're taking another height line here. I'm going to mark this X. Okay, right there. All right, I'm going to project that down to the ground. And because X is touching the picture plane, I can treat that then as a point where I'm going to take true heights from. Now, what is the height of the apex? If you refer back to the drawing sheet, the height of the apex is 80 millimeters. So... From that height line, the X mark, I'm going to measure up a distance of 80 millimeters. Okay. Measure up 80. I've made the mark 80 there. That is the height of the apex. Now, that is not the position of the apex. The apex is going to be somewhere in here. I have to find it. But that is the height it's at. Now, what I can do is I can project that there because we went parallel. Remember, I did a height line. That line there is a height line. I'm just going to write there HL. That's my height line. This line here. Because that line is going in this direction, it's parallel with this line here for our vanishing point, I'm going to vanish this height line to BP, or the height point to BP2. Now what's helpful here is, somewhere along that line is going to be the apex, because this is the exact height of 80 as it touches the picture plane, but as it vanishes back, it's going to appear smaller. Okay, But everywhere along that, in reality, is still 80 millimeters in height. So how do I find this point? I'm going to bring it down to my spectator, Okay, so if I want the spectator's view of it, I bring the apex to the spectator. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it down, but where it hits the pitch plane, I'm going to stop a little bit neater. And then where it hits the pitch plane, drop it down. And what's helpful is where that drops down and goes through that 80 vanishing line right there. It's actually giving me that point right there. I'm now going to connect that up to all the corners. And I've got my pyramid. Okay, so there's that one. That one. I don't think I'd see the back one. This one here, I think I'm going to see most of it. So I'll put it in. I'm taking a bit of a chance there now. And as I said previously, we're not heading in this edge just yet. Now, what I will start to do is I'm going to start working out on the face at the front. Okay, this triangular face. So I want to find this point now and this point because those come out. So if I want to find that point, I bring it down to the spectator, stop it at the pitch plane. If I want to find this point, Bring it down to the spectator, stop it at the pitch plane. Those points end here. Bring it down to the spectator, stop the pitch plane, and then there's another one up here. So I just want to have, you can see there, four points ready. I'll actually bring down the apex one as well. Now, if I want to find the baseline, this one here is on that edge that's running there. You can see it here. It meets it. So I'm going to, where I bring the spectator's view of it, I'm going to drop it down. That's fantastic there. I can find that edge now. So I actually know how far I can heavy it in as. Okay. Could I do the same with this one? Yes, I could. So that'll be there. Bring it down. Now, I won't see that one because there's going to be something happen here in front of us. Okay, so I'm not going to heavy in that just yet. Now I want to heavy in this line and maybe this line and then get this one going back in. So how do I find that line there? Well, that line there is running in this direction. Okay, parallel. So from there, that point is going to vanish to BP2. So somewhere out along that line now is going to be this point. How do I find it? I've already dropped it down to my spectator. In the, in the spectator's view of it, I should say. And drop it down. And there we go. I've now found the point. That point is here. So there's that edge. 
Now, how do I find the edge that's obviously running along at the front? Well, from here, it's clearly going to vanish to BP1. Okay, and if you remember, I found this point previously, that point there, which is the inside one. Okay, what I can do with that one is that point, it's a line going in this direction. So if I vanish BP2 through that point, it'll actually help me locate the front edge. That's where the front edge goes through. Okay, now this is going to be going up. That's why I didn't know how much I can heavy in that just yet. Okay, now we have to actually find um, the triangular uh, surface here at the front, okay? But what it does tell us on the question, note, use an auxiliary vanishing point to locate the sloping edges of the entrance. Now, we've got an angle here that we're going to have to get for this line, and they want us to use an auxiliary vanishing point. We could technically use a height line, because we do have the height now of that, previously, because we drew the elevation, but they've specifically instructed us to use an auxiliary vanishing point. So that's what we're going to do. And the angle is 40 degrees. So what we have to note is, that's where the line is, and it's sloping up to the top point and then going back down. So what vanishing uh, point line are we going to get that auxiliary vanishing point on? Well, the face is actually running in this direction. From here, it goes up to go down. So it's along this one here. So therefore, we're going to measure 40 degrees from our spectator. So how you get an auxiliary vanishing point? You get your protractor. I'm going to zoom in here now. I'm going to put my protractor on the spectator line, and the line that we used originally to find our original vanishing point, VP1, I'm going to put my uh, protractor on that, and I'm going to measure, you can see with the zero resting on the line, I'm going to measure around to 40 degrees, which is in here. So I've made a little mark there, as you can see, and from the spectator, I'm going to extend that all the way out now. So I'm going to go off our page there and zoom out a little bit. So you can see my 40 degree angle inside here. So that's the 40 degree angle. But what's helpful is I need to get the auxiliary vanishing point height. How do I determine that? Perpendicular to this line here, I'm going to extend out perpendicular to cut that, and that will give me the height for my auxiliary vanishing point. So I'm going to line up my 45 degree set square. Rotate. Sorry there, guys, school announcement. I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to extend that out. So, apologies there, folks. Skip forward then until this announcement's done. There we go. Apologies for that, folks. So, there we have it. We've done the line here. We did an angle of 40 degrees in relation to that line. And then from this line, from this point right here, I went perpendicular from that point with a line here. But what's helpful is the height that I get here, that height right there, that I just highlighted, that is my height for AVP. What does AVP stand for? AVP stands for Auxiliary Vanishing Point. So with my compass now, I'm going to take that distance on my compass. So I've got that distance there on the compass, from there to there, and I'm going to mark it from VP1 up. Now, you can see here it's gone higher than my pitch plane. That doesn't matter. Okay, that doesn't matter whatsoever. All I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this up, and right there, that point right there is my A, B, P. Now, that would have been below it if I had brought down my um, ground line a little bit further. Okay, so that light, or sorry, that A, B, P point can help me find the sloping surface. So all I'm going to do is from this point here, I'm going to vanish that all the way up to A, B, P. Somewhere up along that line is going to be that point there. How do I find it? Well, I've already brought down in the plan. I just have to project it down. And right there it is. So now that I found that point right there, I can connect it to here. And I've now got the front face. So there is the front face. Okay, so I've got the front face now. And now I can actually see what I can heavy in back here at this edge. Finally. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to find out how far is it going in there. Well, I can actually see that up here in my 
uh, plan view so i'm just going to bring that down to my spectator so remember line it up with the spectator drop it down it's in there it's very close that line i'm gonna bring that down and somewhere down along there is where it's going to be somewhere down along that line and from here that edge is running back to vp2 and there we go that would be exactly where the point is right there so follow it down bring it down and once i vanish that back i've now got that edge and then finally we know that simply connects to here at an angle and there we have it okay um, so there you go guys that there is the perspective drawing done uh, for the 2013 one um, they asked us to use the auxiliary vanishing point we could have just used the height line and taken it this way um, so for a height line we could have actually extended that down and done another height line and it would have given us the same results but they did specifically ask us for that and they will usually ask you for an auxiliary vanishing point at higher level okay um, so the next part of the question guys okay is this one here it says i'm just going to zoom in so we can read it the interior of the pyramids typically contained uh, numerous passageways which were either level or sloping two such passageways are represented by the skew lines a b and c d the horizontal and vertical coordinates of these lines are given below skew lines are given below so a is these b and so on on a separate diagram draw the projections of the two skew lines a b and c d so they actually want us to start another question here and it's actually just based around the topic of skew lines and then part two determine and indicate in millimeters on your drawing the true length of the shortest connecting shaft that can be drilled between the two passageways a b and c d okay so what we're going to do is we're actually going to get another sheet so i have another sheet here I'm going to zoom out this time i'll set this sheet up i'm just going to tape it down on top of it okay so I'm going to set it up here, just get my masking tape and have it ready. So on a separate diagram, so I grabbed another sheet, I'm going to draw the projections of those two skew lines and they give us the coordinates. Okay. Bottom left and bottom right. Right, so start this drawing. All I need is the coordinates. Now you can see here, and this is a little kind of technique I like to use. This is the measurement going in, this is the measurement going up, and this is the measurement going down. Okay, for those coordinates. So it goes in, up, down. Now, which one is the closest one? 100. Okay, so that's the first one I'm going to do. Then the second one is the 120, so that's point D. The third one is the 140, and then the fourth one is 210. So that's the ones I'm going to mark. 100, 120, 140, 210. I'm going to do all the measurements going inwards first. So zooming out there. I'm going to put my XY line roughly in the middle of the page. Just do a line like that. Now you can see it's quite a light line. Now from here I'm going to pick this as my rough starting point about there. I'm going to mark in 100. Actually no, sorry did I think of it. I'm actually going to start about here, apologies, on the left hand side. I'm going to mark in 100. 120, 140, and the last one was 210, 21. Okay, and from all those points that I've just done there, I'm going to do lines up and down. We'll obviously measure them, or put in all those various measurements up and down. Oh, sorry, that wasn't one, that was my original one. Apologies there, there they are. Okay, just get my rubber there. We're about that one so it doesn't confuse me. That was my original point that I was thinking of measuring from. Okay, so there we have it. There's our lines. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in those measurements going vertical. So starting with the number one, I'm going to focus on this one first. 100 in, 30 up, 20 down for number one. So for the first one there, 30 up. I'm just using a bit of maths here so I'm marking from the 10. 30 up. 20 down as far as the 8 so there's the first one the second one for my measurements are 100 up and 10 down 100 up so i'll go from 9 up to 19. i need to extend that line a bit further there's 100 up and 10 down it says that one was quite small bay number three was 100 up and 80 down so same thing 100 up, 9 up to 19. So extend the line up a little bit further. 100 up and 80 down. 
comments was there and then finally the last one was 40 up and 40 down 9 up as far as 13 and 9 down as far as 5 okay so labeling those points now the very first one was a so this is a and a and my number two this is d and d d and d and b and b and b and obviously the last one is c and c so c and c Okay, let's draw on the projections of those lines. Now what I like to do, just for the purpose of the video, I'm heavy in the XY line, just underneath the lines. I'm not gonna, so that's my XY line. And now I'm going to draw on the projections of those lines. So I've got the line AB and the line CD. So A connects to B. And CD to D, A to B in plan, and C to D in plan. Okay, so we've drawn in projections of those lines. Now, this is a skew lines question, okay? So, more than likely, you'll have practiced this in class. What we need to do. We need to see these two skew lines being parallel. That is the only way we'll be able to determine the shortest distance between, as they're indicating here, these shafts. Okay, these are like tunnels. Okay, and when we see them parallel, we will be able to determine what is the shortest tunnel that we can obviously connect the two shafts together with. Now, to do that, we need to actually create a plane out of these guys up here. So, to make a plane out of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go parallel to the line AB. It doesn't really matter actually which way I go. I can do it downwards as well. Um, no, I'll go parallel. Would that be going out? It's just a choice here. Now, apologies, guys. I'm going to maybe kind of going way out here. I'm actually going to go parallel to the line. Um, just thinking. Yeah, I'll still do the line AB. Apologies. So parallel to the line AB. <coughs> actually, I have to bring it down a little bit. So parallel to the line AB. There we go. From C, so parallel to the line AB from C, and from D, I'm going to project horizontally across, and let's say we call that point P. Now, I have to find the point P also in the plan view. So, if P is found in elevation in plan, it has to be directly below it. Okay, so P is obviously below it in the plan view. So I projected parallel to the line AB from point C. I'm going to do the exact same thing in my plan view. Parallel to the line AB. So I set up my set squares. Parallel to the line AB. I'm going to project it from C. Okay, and there is point P. Now point P we know connects back to D. What's helpful about that line is that line there is a true length okay and we know if we look along a true length on a surface we will then see that surface as an edge view but what's more helpful here then is we will actually be able to see the two skew lines being parallel okay so i'm going to set up an x1 y1 now perpendicular to that true length line let's go getting out now perpendicular there we go and it doesn't really matter. I'm actually going to position it back here. It doesn't really matter which one I do. I'll do it from about here. Actually put it right on C, just so it fits on my page, actually. No, I'll put it a little bit out from C. Okay, now we'll just use the marker here once again. So that there is my X1, Y1. Now remember, we're only trying to find the points A, B, C, and D. I'm going to use P to help me out. So B will go out, A will go out, D goes out, and C goes out. Okay, 
So somewhere out along there is going to be those points. Now what I have to do is, I'm, if I project from the plan, I'm going to take my heights from the elevation. Now based on the height from my point B here, you can see B and D are up 100 millimeters in height. And as you can see there, if I project out from B, that'll actually go off my page. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set up here what's called a datum line. I'm just going to set up the datum line in the elevation. And it'll make my life a little bit easier. So from A, I'm going to put A right on it. Okay, that there is going to be my datum line. What that does is it's going to allow me to eliminate the blank space from the XY line up to A. Okay, and treat it like I'm going to be doing all my measurements from here. So I'm eliminating that space. It just saves me and it helps me to be able to fit the drawing onto the sheet so I don't have to put down an extra sheet. Okay, so to do that, A first of all straight away now is actually on my datum line. So if I mark out A, A is actually going to be there. That's going to be now what I'm going to call A1. Okay, now I want to find the height up for D and B, which are at the same height. So I'll take the distance for D, which is the same as the height for B. So I'm going to mark it out on D. And there's D. I'm going to mark it out on B. And there's B. And you can see here it's after helping me fit it on the page. And now the last one I'm going to mark it is C. Just make sure I'm accurate with my mark from there now. And from C onto the X and Y one, mark it out. Labeling my points. This is B1, D1, and C1. Now, if we're accurate here, these lines should be parallel, and I can measure the perpendicular distance between them to find uh, the shortest shaft that will connect them. So, what I often like to do here now is, and I'm just proving this, I'll mark them up. I won't draw it in just yet. I like to connect them together first, then just do a little bit of slide and set squares. I want to see that they are actually parallel, and we'll see what my accuracy was like. Yeah, I'm quite happy. About a half a mil out there, but I'm actually quite happy with that, so put it in. So there's the line AB and the line CD. Now what I'm seeing is I'm seeing those two shafts currently and they're both parallel to one another. Now what I can simply do here is I can mark the perpendicular distance between the two of them. So all I need to do is go perpendicular between those shafts. So that's where I'm going to get any distance. Think of road geometry, it's kind of like thickness nearly. Okay, and that distance there is the shortest distance between them. Shortest distance, I say shortest distance, I should say shortest distance for a shaft. And what I'm going to say then is I will measure it. What is my measurement? Sorry there. And for me, it's working out to be 44. I'm going to say 44. And more than likely, now we're talking in millimeters on the sheet. We'll put it in millimeters, but probably in reality, it's probably in 44 meters. Okay, so there you have it, folks. That there was the part B of the question. Okay, the part two of that question, or sorry, I should say B, and it's actually B1 and 2. Okay, so there you have it, folks. That there was the 2013 uh, perspective question. Uh, on the previous sheets just behind this one and then obviously the one that we did there it is okay that one that we just spent a bit of time on there slipped it up okay that one there and then on the second part of that question we had to do the skew lines question okay so i hope you found it helpful guys that's that one done